Hi, today I want to do a little bit of colour mixing. Um, I've been asked quite a lot about this and how I arrive at my colours and most of the time I arrive at them by mixing old colours into new colours and it's all kind of very ad hoc but I just thought I'd talk you through a, a couple of different sorts of greens. So when I first started um, lino cut printing I didn't have a, lots and lots of colours like I do now. So the first greens I want to show you I'm going to use um, a yellow, a straightforward blue, a black and the red because I had red, blue, yellow, black, white when I first started printmaking and then we'll go into some colour variations. So the blue I've got is uh, it's phthalo, uh, no it's bronze dark blue um, but any blue, it could be any blue really, it doesn't matter so much. So basically you know we learn in primary school that um, yellow mixed with blue will make a green. Now I would always say start with the pale colour and then just add a little bit of the darker colour so you will get a green and that's a very bright kind of green there and always check it on paper because it might look even more you know it looks even more yellowy on the paper. So I don't particularly like that so I'm going to add a little bit of red to it to make it a more olivey green. So adding red to that blend of yellow and blue will immediately, to me, make it a more sort of attractive olivey green. And you can actually push that a little bit further. And for me, I'm always trying to make my greens look fairly natural. So that's one version. Another green that you can make that's quite vibrant, you can do with black, which sounds very counterintuitive, but here I've got a little bit of black. So use a tiny bit. Watch it with the black because it's very easy to overpower. And that makes quite an interesting green. I quite often use yellow and black as the kind of kickoff point for mixing greens. You can see that instead of going into that kind of very bright almost synthetic green it's gone into quite a nice sort of natural green kind of decent bit of my finger quite a natural sort of green you can also add a little red to that and tip it again towards more towards the olive color and if I were working, let's say now I wanted to make a darker green, then what I would probably be doing is I would be going back and mixing up my blue and that's quite nice, uh, that with the greater blue in it. You can see, but I think that's quite a sort of synthetic colour. So again, I'd probably lock it off maybe with a bit of black, a bit of red. And this is really how I do this. It's like endless bits and bobs mixing. So I might scoop up a bit of the initial colour. So a bit more. I started mixing colour to colour to save money because I was a student and I couldn't afford much ink. So I wouldn't waste any ink. So I always mix my old colours into my new colours. So now I've got this colour coming, which um, if I put that down there is it's not bad it's it's not a bad color but it's a little bit too greeny green for me so i'm going to take a little bit of red and mix it and it's like anything else the more you practice the better you get at mixing colors and the more you can arrive at what you want now um, when I used to teach one-to-one -one, I used to mix colours for students and they used to tell me what colour I wanted, they wanted rather, and I'd have to try and match it. The way I did it was to use um, a Pantone chart and a Pantone chart is, they're, they're very expensive I'm afraid, but basically what it is is um, a colour chart and at the bottom of each colour, get it the right way up, 
you actually get the proportions of colour that make up that, that particular shade. So even if you don't have the Pantone colours, it's a really good idea. You can look and you think, oh, well, I want a sort of that kind of bluish colour. So that we know is 87% white and 12.5% 12, 12 blue. So you can kind of get an idea of the amounts of things. Um, so you can mix up colours. So that's quite a good uh, thing. If you're really struggling, then it might be worth investing in a Pantone chart. But if you want to learn to mix colour, then a good exercise is just to get some paint swatches from the DIY store and see if you can match the colours. So adding white to the colour will change its character a lot. So if I start mixing in some white, I can take this colour down in tone. Yeah, that's quite nice actually. Uh, down in tone to match the paler green but it's a much quieter colour than that rather acid green there. So adding white will change it quite a bit. Then as I got sort of um, more money and, and more coloured inks I could go a bit further. So here I've got some yellow ochre and if I add black to that it's not going to do the same as the bright yellow, it's just going to turn into a sort of duller browny colour. But here I've got some Prussian blue and that's going to make quite an interesting green. It's very, very different sort of green from the ones I've just mixed. It's in the sort of grey green spectrum. I quite often do a lot of work about Scottish, uh, Scottish landscape. And the Scottish landscape, there are sort of brilliant, vibrant acid greens and oranges and things like that. But quite often... There are these kind of dead grasses and things which almost a grey sort of greeny colour there, a very subdued green. But if I want to brighten it up a bit, let's just put a little bit of that into it. And again, it's that yellow is just lifting it now into something a little bit brighter and a little bit grassier. So it's sort of, uh, then if I add, let's have a look at what happens if I add a little red to it. And we're subduing it again, but in a different way. It's a richer, now it's tipping into a richer colour. That's really nice. Yeah. So another very different green. And then I'm going to go back to my ochre. And I, I confess that I do this all the time when I'm, I've got ink left on the slab and I, I want to use it up. Um, I, I like, this is Prussian blue again. Prussian blue is kind of a very dramatic blue. Um, and it's, I quite like it. So here we go, we're going really bright sort of emerald -y green. Add lots of blue to that. Sometimes a good bright green's necessary, but I don't use it a lot in my work. Let's see, there we go with the white added to that. Sometimes adding white to a sort of bright synthetic green is enough to tip it into something a little bit better. That you see now I've added white to it, I like it better. It's a more subdued sort of colour. Now here I'm not trying to match any particular shade of green, I'm just talking and mixing greens as I go. Um, if I were trying to match a green then I would be a lot more sort of careful about how I was approaching it. But I think the main takeaway from this is probably that you just need little tiny bits and you need to just play with the ink. So what I will often do is I will have some ink out on the slab and I will play with like a tester batch 
and mix a tiny bit of ink up and sort of get an eye for what I want before I start mixing a big amount of ink. Because as every printmaker will tell you, there are times when you just like the more you try and mix the colour you want, the more you end up with brown and not a nice brown at that. And I'm quite fond of grey blue, uh, grey green. So I'm just sort of seeing how I can get to a grey green here. Um, and if that happens, you just have to throw the ink away. It's, it's sort of no redeeming it. So so mix a little first and get your hand in, and then mix the larger amount. Thing to remember about black is that it's a deadening force, which is useful. It's it's um, if you add blacks to things, it, it calms and it knocks back so if you have a uh, like a green that's too vibrant red will tip it into the olivey uh, color black will cool it and deaden it so be careful with black because you you may not want to knock your green on the head but um, otherwise it's just just play use colors you've already mixed use bits and pieces like the more complicated and the more you mix the kind of more natural the colour becomes um, but that's very much your personal taste it's you may not like that you may like these kind of really bright um, more synthetic colours or more vibrant colours I think the thing to do is go for what you like and um, just play about and get some practice in so that's greens and I'm going to make a film about neutral greys as well, because that's another colour that is important how you mix it. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you'll join me again.